guys, it's Alice and today it's time to do the 2020 edition of my annual book gift guide. As usual, I have separated these into three different categories and the first one is books most people would enjoy and the first one I have for this is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. This is a historical fiction mystery novel set in 1920s India where we meet one of India's first female lawyers and the story in here is about how she gets involved in this case with some women who live in seclusion and she has to try and navigate this as the case evolves to murder. I love this book. I think it's so good. It's like a cozy mystery, but it digs a little bit deeper than your average cozy mystery. I love the setting of this. I love the time period and the main character is fantastic. Secondly, I have picked out The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I realize this book has been everywhere in 2020, but I think this would make a great gift for someone who maybe hasn't read it yet. This is about two identical twins who grow up in a small black community in the South in America and they end up as adults leading very different lives. One of them ends up passing for white and the other one doesn't. And this is just an extremely well-written novel with some really interesting themes and it's a great book to discuss with someone else so you can give it to someone and then have a little chat about it after they've read it. The next book we've got is Troy by Stephen Fry. This is the third book in Fry's Great Mythology Retellings series. The other books are Mythos and Heroes, and all of them make great gifts. And I generally find that most people like these types of books. They're very easy to read and enjoyable, and Fry is obviously very funny, so I think that most people would get on with these books. Second to last in this category, we have got one of my favorite reads of 2020, and it is A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende. If you know someone who likes historical fiction, this one is fantastic. It starts off in Spain in the late 1930s when the country is being gripped by civil war, and we meet these characters who have to flee the country, and eventually they end up in chili and this is just an absolutely amazing novel with great characters and it's all about like war and home and it's just so good. Last in this category we have got a book that I feel like I show off all the time because I love it so much and it is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's a contemporary fiction novel set in the suburbs of Cleveland and we meet two families whose lives become entangled and it's all about secrets and motherhood and identity and it has amazing characters and it's extremely well written. Moving on to the second category, we have got books for your weird friends. And the first one we have here is A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. So this is a book I actually think a lot of people would like, but I've put it in this category because if you're gonna like this, you have to be okay with reading about unlikable characters because the main character in here is infuriating. The story is about this author who basically steals other people's stories to build his whole career and it's just, it's so good. I love how it's written, but the main character, although interesting, is horrible. Secondly, we have got a book that I reread this year and I'm pretty sure I've put this in another gift guide at some point, but I just felt like including it again this year and it is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I feel like although this is one of my favorite books of all time, on rereading it, I feel like I realized that this book may not be for everyone because it's kind of slow and leans a little pretentious. I feel like it's a slightly acquired taste kind of thing. I love this book though. I think it's one of the best like character studies that I've ever read. And the story is about this group of college kids at an elite college in New England who study classics and they do some really shady stuff. I love this book though. I think it's so good. It's so well written and I love the characters. A good alternative to this though, if you feel like this is a little much, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt is maybe a little bit more palatable, but if you have a weird friend around, this might make a good gift. Then we have got some Horror, and it is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is a really fun and entertaining book 
set in the 90s in the suburbs where we meet a book club of women who get involved with this vampire and it sounds a little weird because it kind of is it's weirdly like domestic but then it also has like this fantasy element and there are some really like gruesome horror scenes and I feel like if you know the right person this would make a great gift like if you have someone who likes horror and they're like a vampire person I think this would be pretty good by a vampire person I mean someone who likes vampires not an actual vampire obviously next maybe you have someone in your life who likes reading about stuff like death and if you do I have the perfect book for that person and it is From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dowdy. This is a non-fiction book all about death rituals around the world. So this author has traveled all around and explored how different people and different cultures deal with their dead loved ones. And it's all about humanity and confronting your mortality and how people do that in different parts of the world. And it's absolutely fascinating for the right person. Lastly, in this category, we have got a book that is not like super weird, but it's a little weird, and it is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a historical fiction fantasy novel set in the Russian wilderness, and it's about this young woman who can see like house spirits and forest spirits and all kinds of spirits that like are all around, but she's the only one who can see them. And the people of this town, they pay homage to these spirits. So they like feed them and stuff because these spirits are supposed to protect them. But then some priest comes in and tells them that they can't do that anymore. And then things ensue. This is a really, really great book. It is a little weird though. I don't think it's for everyone, but if you have someone who likes fairy tales and like wintry books and YA fantasy, this is a great gift. The last category is pretty books that are perfect as gifts and I have quite a lot of different ones this year and the first are these beautiful editions of The Wild Swans, The Little Mermaid and The Snow Queen and these are illustrated fairy tales and I feel like giving one of these or all three to someone who likes books and fairy tales is a perfect gift. The second thing I've picked out is Isabel Greenberg's graphic novels. So I have Glass Town and The 100 Nights of Hero, but I think she has some more that you can choose from. These are beautiful hardback graphic novels and they're standalones, they're not in a series, and I feel like like getting one of these books is such a treat and they're perfect for both people who like to read and those who don't because they're quite quick to read and if you know someone who likes art these are perfect i also had to include these books a poem for every winter day and a poem for every autumn day and these are obviously very beautiful books they're poetry collections and they have all kinds of different authors and styles and themes and they are like the most giftable books of all time because just look at them. Like who wouldn't love having something like this on their shelves? Lastly, for this category, I just have to mention Persephone Books, who is one of my favorite independent publishers. They publish these beautiful gray classics and I can specifically recommend the books by Dorothy Whipple. My favorites are They Were Sisters and Someone at a Distance, although they have like loads to choose from and you could just check out their website. They have so much. And I just love this publisher. I love these editions. They're really high quality and they're perfect for like book lovers. At the very end here, I just want to say something that I've seen quite a lot of other people say and I just want to mention it. Maybe this year is a good year to do some of your Christmas shopping from like small independent shops and I will leave a link to some that I really like in the description that sell like bookmarks and I think I have a jewelry one and maybe you can do some of your Christmas shopping there because they're all great and I will leave a link to all of them down below. Okay guys, that was everything that I had for you today and I hope this is going to be maybe a little helpful in trying to pick stuff for your loved ones or maybe for yourself. I feel like the fact that we've made it this far into 2020 means that we all deserve like an extra present this year. That might just be me wanting to buy myself more books. I don't really know. I'd love to know if you have any recommendations for books you feel are perfect as gifts. And as always, I will leave a link to my other social media 
and my Patreon in the description if you're interested. And I will see you soon. Bye!